On November 18, 2025, the internet just went dark. In the beginning, it was only a message not being sent, but as time went, companies like X, formerly Twitter, ChatGPT, all went completely dark. People who were using AI for their everyday needs were the ones who were affected the most. This was not the work of an hacker or some ship's anchor going into the sea and cutting a cable and making the internet stop working, but it was a work of a mistake which happened in a single company whose name most of us don't know, but it controls 20% of the internet. Hi guys, this is the story of Cloudflare, a company designed to build the internet's unbreakable shield, but on November 18, it ended up being the hammer which shattered it. Let's go straight into the video to understand the fragile digital world we are living in today. To understand how a single mistake in a single company can cause outage of the internet, let's speak about the internet's worst kept secret internet has landlords and this cloudware company is one of the major landlords in the internet it is the largest content delivery networks see all this sounds greek and latin to us i'll give you an example to make us understand better suppose there is a book which is being published in london i am in mumbai and i want this book and if i order this book it has to be shipped from london which will take a lot of time so what people do is they open sub stores in Mumbai in such a way that that book is present in Mumbai also. So if I want that book, that book will be delivered to me fast. This is what Cloudflare does for the internet. Suppose a website is created in the United States of America and I am living in India. If I want to access this website, I need access to a server. And if this server is there in USA, my internet is going to be slow because of the distance the internet has to travel to get the information on that website. So what this Cloudflare company does is it opens something called as the edge server. There will be a server which is present in Mumbai also with the same copy of this website which I want to access its code and all the information in it will be present in this sub server also. These sub servers are famously called as the edge servers. So when I want to access this website in Mumbai, I can easily access it from this server only. This is what Cloudflare does. The other important work Cloudflare does is it protects us from the DDoS attack. See, basically this DDoS attack is when a lot of bots try to enter a website. Suppose a new product is releasing and somebody releases millions of bots to enter into the website such that the actual ones who want to buy that product cannot enter and the website crashes and Cloudflare is one of the major protective agents who protect the website from these bots. So it serves as a sub server, also it serves as a protection agent. Also Cloudflare has one more work. It is the internet's phone book. See it is the one which converts the domain names like Google into an IP address and we all know that IP addresses are the ones which are used to locate from where the website had come from. So being a protective agent, being the one giving us a faster, smoother internet and being our phone book, this Cloudflare has 20% of the internet's websites under its protective shield. This is why the November 18 outage of a single mistake in this Cloudflare company caused the outage in this internet. Now let's see what happened on November 18. Everybody's websites were showing error 500. Now let's see what was the mistake in this Cloudflare. See, think of Cloudflare as a series of islands which are connected with each other by fiber optic cables. They have two planes which are the main control center of this Cloudflare company. One is the control plane. This control plane is like a brain of an operation. This is the one can be equated to the server and the sub servers which give the command. But to take these commands, they have the data plane. This data plane is the fiber optic cables. On November 18, some of these data cables stopped working. Since the problem was with the data planes, the information couldn't be transmitted out. The control plane was normal, it was giving the signals, but it was not going through these data planes. So what the control plane did was, it started sending these signals through the healthier cables. Because there were only some cables which were not working, some other cables were still working. But the problem here was, the signals got confused and it eventually started going into a black hole and the internet shut down fully. Similar outage happened in September, but in September, the problem was with the control plane. That is, the brain stopped working, but the muscles had already received some signal before the brain could stop working and they were using that signal 
and in the meantime the people in the company repaired the control center but this time what happened was since the problem was with the data cables the control plane got confused and eventually both shut down because the signals were not being transmitted through the data plane the outage lasted for 2 hours only for some it was a coffee break but for some e-commerce companies they had lost millions this brings us to the most important question the internet paradox the centralization of internet see in the early 2000s or when the internet was created it was meant to be decentralized that is different parts of the internet will be working from different parts of the world such that even if one part doesn't work the other parts will continue working but in the last few years we have actually centralized the internet that is internet has gone in the exact opposite way it was meant to be built now we have something which is known as the cloud servers these cloud servers are the one which store the data we have big companies having these servers like the amazon aws the microsoft azure the google cloud also this cloud fair now these servers are hyper efficient data centers situated in specific parts of the world and now they are centralized now what happens is if one part of this data center has some problem the internet totally shuts down so instead of decentralizing the internet we have actually centralized the internet see it has a lot of advantages centralizing the internet also see it has made the internet more faster more efficient for example some company which is starting up from my room only i can compete with the fortune 500 company because of this fast and efficient internet these cloud servers have enabled but at the same time they have centralized the internet that is if there is a small mistake in these companies the entire internet shut down so today internet is like being built on these cloud server companies and these cloud servers are like pillars of the internet and if one pillar gets shaken the entire internet shuts down so this brings us to this problem of centralization of internet and this shutdown has put more focus on that topic this cloudfare issue has reopened internet's great paradox centralization companies like cloudfare have made our life more easier they've made the internet more efficient as well as safer but are we risking more efficiency and safety for the risk of global outages this is the question in everybody's mind now single mistake in a single company had caused a global outage this is a thought which everybody is asking today companies like cloudfare have to be a little more careful this is not a question of incompetence they are all very efficient companies they just have to be a little careful to make sure that these things don't happen because even if the internet is down for two hours in today's world the losses can rake up to millions do like share and subscribe me for more interesting videos